starts right now. Good morning. It is Tuesday. It is August 1st. Our producer told us to kick it up a notch here. I, I don't know how we're going to do that exactly. Do you have any ideas? Uh, we can pretend it's snowing outside. Oh, <laughs> I mean, can you believe this weather, Justin <laughs> Horn? It's incredible. Chilly. Uh, oof. Wouldn't that be nice? But listen. I can give you some rain chances tonight. Okay. I can give you some rain chances. So this is this is exciting. It's a very small chance, but there is a chance for some showers today. Here's why. We've got a little area of low pressure, a little disturbance. It's rolling around the bottom of our ridge. Uh, and as it moves in a little bit later today, there is an outside small chance uh, that it could kick up a shower or two. Uh, there it is moving uh, west. And as it moves across San Antonio this evening, yes, there is a chance. Uh, that we could get uh, some of that activity moving in. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Most of us are going to stay dry, but I have put in a 20% chance of rain as we head into the evening hour. So high temperature still right 102. There's that 20% chance. And much like the Powerball, it'll be the luck of the draw. Hopefully you're one of those ones that uh, does get lucky and gets a straight shower later today. As we go outside for you, we had some morning clouds. Those are beginning to break up. And now the blue sky is starting to shine through. Uh, super moon. We've got some good pictures of that. We're going to show you those pictures coming up at 930. Also, we're going to look at the August climatology. It's a new month. What changes for us? Plus, we've got a uh, fire danger starting to kick up. Things are getting pretty dry. So that rain, uh, that would be a really good thing today. Uh, more on that in just a bit. And now we toss it over to Stephen. I know you love Tuesdays. How are things going on this Tuesday? Well, I'm not loving this Tuesday, Justin. Traffic's making me do this from what we're seeing here at Transguide. Let me show you what's happening out there. 35 over on the southwest side, you see that we have some barriers in place. In fact, that digital sign right behind me does let drivers know to move over to the left lane because there's some road work taking place. Now, this road work actually wrapped up overnight, but those barriers are what's still in place. But check it out. A lot of these drivers that are uh, out there along 35 heading their way into San Antonio along the northbound lanes are not following the rules of the road. What we've been seeing are folks driving off across a grassy median and onto the frontage road to avoid that congestion. Guys, you don't want to do that. We mentioned earlier that you could possibly face a fine for not following those rules. And also, more importantly, you could possibly, there you go, doing it again. Uh, you could possibly start a vehicle fire or fire there because it's so dry and hot outside. Take it easy, pack some patience. It's not a big long stretch there, but we are seeing a buildup, okay? US 90, it's part of me, it should be here at 35 northbound there around Benton City Road. I'll get that updated here for you in just a moment, but check out the backup that we see. Again, it's not very large, but we saw about maybe two miles or so, it picks up again at Fisher Road. So be on the lookout. Again, don't drive across the grassy median. That is not the safest thing to do. Let's talk about what else is happening here along 281 on the north side of San Antonio. You may see some paving work Work taking place. I mentioned that this started yesterday and it's going to take us all the way to the end of the work week. Saturday, August 5th, I should say, 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, alternating lane closures along the frontage road in both directions at Boulevardy Road. I know it's a lot of information and along there's a lot going on there along 35, but scan this QR code takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. We have all the latest on the road work that is happening in our city, so you know what areas to avoid before you have to hit the roads. And remember, if you see those crews out there or any barricades, just be sure to pack some patience they're working to improve the roadways for everybody. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Here's today's 9 at 9. The job openings and labor turnover survey for June, also known as JOLTS, comes out this morning. Economists are predicting about 200,000 jobs were gained last month, while the unemployment rate is expected to stay put at 3.6%. As for the overall economy, some analysts are starting to see a bright light at the end of the money tunnel. Donald Trump is slamming special counsel Jack Smith as his legal team braces for a possible new indictment over his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The federal grand jury is expected to meet again today, but that's not a guarantee of an indictment. It does, however, signal that the special counsel is close to making a final decision one way or the other. Suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton is asking the court to dismiss most of the articles of impeachment against him. Texas House of Representatives impeached Paxton back in May for alleged misconduct, including allegations that he used his office to help a prominent donor. Paxton denies the allegations. West Virginia and Oklahoma National Guard members are heading to Texas to provide help at the U.S.-Mexico border. They will provide more security, prevent migrants from crossing into the U.S. illegally, and work to stop illegal drugs from entering the country. 
About 50 soldiers and airmen from each state will be on patrol. A bill to revamp the national organ donation system is expected to be signed into law by President Biden. Once signed, it will be the first time the National Organ Procurement and Transplant Network is open up to organizations other than the nonprofit United Network for Organ Sharing. The hope is to cut down on long wait lists for transplants. CBS is cutting back and now plans to lay off around 5,000 people. The company says jobs affected are primarily corporate positions and likely will not hit customer service jobs in its stores and pharmacies. It may not be long before electric cars are carrying a key component from an oil giant. ExxonMobil is in talks with companies like Tesla and Ford to become a supplier of lithium for batteries. Exxon is making moves into the lithium business. It already owns 100,000 acres in Arkansas that has deposits of the metal. More tough times for malls across the country. Moody's Analytics says more than $14 billion worth of loans backed up by mall properties are coming due in the next year. But in many cases, the malls themselves are worth millions less than the loans they're backing. It's time to say goodbye to the incandescent light bulb. But starting today, retailers can no longer sell them for common household use. You'll now be able to buy online only LED bulbs, which use less energy. Cost more than the old bulbs, but they last up to 50 times longer. And that's today's Nine at Nine. In your morning headlines, research continues into the lasting effects if you contracted COVID. And a unique hair competition that has barbers buzzing. Max Massey joins us in the studio with more of our morning headlines. Max, or where are we starting this morning? I wanted to start with the, the haircut competition, I'm going to be honest. But we're going to get there. we got to keep people on the line. And so we're starting in the storied Churchill Downs. It's the site of the Kentucky Derby. And guys, officials, they're going to resume racing in September. But it has been a strange series of events and a fortunate series of events. So this announcement comes in the wake of a series of horse deaths. 12 horses died since just March 30th, many of them euthanized after suffering injuries while racing. Remember back in June, we first told you about this. The company temporarily suspended all racing operations to review the protocols. In a press release this week, the company says enhancements to ensure the safety and well-being of horses. It's been implemented. Those changes included upgraded infrastructure, increasing veterinary oversight, establishing a new safety committee, and collaborating with industry experts. Now, the regularly scheduled meet starts September 14th. Now, in the aftermath of the pandemic, the impact of long COVID. Some people suffer lingering symptoms of the virus weeks or even months after they were first infected. So now, the Biden administration hoping that researchers can find answers to this problem known as long COVID. The White House announcing it is establishing a new office within the Department of Health and Human Services, an office that will lead federal government's response. It's estimated that up to 23 million people in the country are dealing with long COVID. Now, the agency will launch clinical trials for long COVID patients, trying to figure out how exactly to treat it. Scientists say there are more than 200 symptoms associated with long COVID, and they can affect nearly every part of your body, including the heart, your lungs, stomach, and of course, your immune system. Guys, how about this headline? A Chinese zoo says our bears are real, denying that they are humans in disguise. I mean, come on, it writes itself. The zoo in eastern China trying to reassure visitors that their sun bears are not people dressed in costumes. There have been rumors and conspiracy theories circulating on social media after videos of this sun bear standing on its hind legs went viral. So in the video being shared online, the bear looks kind of like a person, appears to wave to the crowd. Its fur appears loose, wrinkled in certain places, almost like a bad fitting bear suit. Sun bears, fun fact guys, the world's smallest bear species. And in a statement, the zoo insists people just don't understand their behavior. <laughs> I want to go to you guys just to see your face. I, I've seen I the video. It okay. starts out rather suspect, but then uh -huh. eventually when it goes back down on all fours, totally a bear. Right. Okay, totally a bear. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're locked in on the bear theory. I, I think, think so. so. Okay. <laughs> you never know these days. I'm just yeah. saying. All right, now to a story, my favorite story of the morning. Look at him. It's adorable. A toddler in New York hoping his hair can raise thousands of dollars for our veterans. Two-year-old entering the U.S. mullet championship. From his birth... Two-year-old Grayson Woods hit a ton of hair. 
He actually was called Mini Joe Dirt, and the name stuck. So Grayson has had a mullet since only two months old. Now it's very long. I mean, very long. Grayson is actually competing in the Kids USA Mullet Championship. And if he wins, $2,500 will be added to his bank account. And the fundraising efforts go to the Jared Allen's Home for Wounded Warriors. But he kept calling him Joe Dirt and um, just kept saying for us to get a mullet. Grayson, if he does win, um, he can't tell us what he wants to do with the money. But he does have a bank account, um, and we're just going to stick it in there until he can decide for himself what he wants to do with the money. So there's a lot of people backing him, too. The previous winner from Western New York, Mark Steves, or as he's more famously known, Hollywood Mark, he's putting his money <laughs> on Grayson. The 2023 USA Mullet Championship just wrapped up the second round of online voting. So now a panel of judges will critique each mullet and determine who is the champion. I mean, come on, guys. You got to love the kid, love the story, love the cause. Yeah. I like the little pic mm -hmm. of, uh, of him, you know, when they, they first, he turns around and a close-up of him. That was there so goes cute. my new nickname. Yeah, Hollywood <laughs> Mark, I know. <laughs> San Antonio you, Mark. You have to Alamo support City the Mark. look. I like yeah. it, yeah. Right. Mark, I think Mark. you would look yeah, great with like, a mullet. I'm, I'm just going to throw it I out look there. Downright, downright ridiculous, but... <laughs> Just no, you would be Hollywood Mark. Hollywood, it's true. <laughs> Thank you, Mac. Nice guy. He's like, thanks, you. Mac. 909, 82 degrees. <laughs> Here's a look at what's coming up next. The San Antonio Film Festival is celebrating its 29th anniversary this year. We're taking a look at the different films and networking opportunities for locals next. Looking out there with live cam, things kind of heating up, really not too bad. I went out to my car to get my other cup of caffeine, mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it's tolerable right now, Justin. We spend these uh, morning hours really kind of soaking it in uh, because those are the few hours during the day when you can do that. Uh, I do think that as we get into the afternoon, there will be some showers around. Most of us are not going to get any. Thing. But the fact that we have rain in the forecast is just exciting overall. So let's jump right into it. Uh, here is our ridge pipe pressure. We know it's there. We know we felt it yesterday. It was 103. But what I'm watching is this little disturbance here in Louisiana. Now, there was some rain yesterday. This was yesterday at 9 o'clock, okay? Uh, this thing is actually moving underneath the ridge and trying to move west. As it moves closer to us, it's conceivable that it could scare up a shower or two. Now, keep in mind, this high pressure is still kind of squashing things. But the computer models do indeed want to develop a couple of showers. Nothing noontime, nothing around 1 o'clock, but let's fast forward to 4 or 5 o'clock, and here we go. Some stray showers, nothing that's going to be very heavy, uh, developing mainly east of I-35. That's where it wants to keep most of the rain. This is 7 o'clock, Gonzales up to maybe the Lockhart area shows some showers and then uh, maybe a downpour and maybe just maybe a shower over San Antonio. We'll see. I think rain chances are 10 to 20 at best. Uh, and it's mainly for folks east of I-35, but at least there is an opportunity there. Uh, we'll take anything we can get at this point. 94 noontime, 101 at 3 o'clock, 102 the high temperature. And then we start to uh, add in some of those small rain chances. I'm going to put it in basically 5 to 7 p.m. That would be the window if we're going to get anything. Uh, that's when it would be. 98 at 8 p.m. And then we'll look for uh, mostly clear skies tonight. Okay, 100 degree days. We did hit 100 again yesterday. So we're getting into the close to the top five range. We're not there yet. But you see all the years where we've had a ton of 100 degree days. 2009, 2022, 2011, 2013, 2020. I want to show you where the where we had our last 100 degree day during those years. We've kind of plotted it out here, August into September. What do you want to take away from all this? Well, the average last 100 degree day is August 26th. The latest is September 28th. So all this to say, if we're comparing those years to this year, Late August, September is when we can probably expect our 100 degree days to kind of go away. Uh, that is the idea, and uh, that's what we're looking forward to. That's the hope. Uh, so maybe if we can get through one more month here, we'll be done with these uh, triple digits on our seven day forecast. 82 right now, dew point is at 74, southerly winds at about 6, the heat index is at 88. And you look at the uh, satellite picture, 
Yeah, we've had some morning clouds, but they're quickly breaking up. 83 Pleasanton, 78 Kerrville, low 80s here in San Antonio. And uh, we'll see those numbers warm up into the triple digits again today. Again, 102 here in San Antonio. Most everybody will be in the triple digits with few exceptions in the hill country. And it is another CPS Energy yellow day with, uh, with CPS asking you to conserve energy between 3 and 8 p.m. Here's the future cast as we look long term here. High pressure still very much in control. And I think by Friday and Saturday, we can see some of our hottest temperatures as this thing is building and sitting right over top of us. It does try to shift west by Sunday. Still hot here, still dry, but it's a good trend. If we can keep it moving west and maybe uh, moving completely out of the way, that would be a good thing. Uh, no indication that's going to be the case just yet. Uh, you see the triple digits across the board, but the one thing you noticed there, we added in that 20% chance coming up later today. Guys, we'll thank, take it. Thank you, Justin. Dozens of films from documentaries about immigration to foodie films will be screened at multiple venues this week for the 29th annual San Antonio Film Festival. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts to tell us more about these films and how this event is giving opportunities to local filmmakers. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Stephanie and Mark. This is going to be one of the locations, but they're also going to be showing films at the Radius Center and at the Santico's Palladium Theater. So many to choose from. This morning we have Adam, who is the festival director, here to join us to talk more about this. Good morning. Hey, good morning. You're tired a little. <laughs> You've been running around everywhere trying to put this together. Tell That's me good. a little bit about the films that are part of this. Sure, there's uh, about 250 films almost, and they're from around the world. The filmmakers flying in from globally, so I'm so excited about this. We worked so hard about, le uh, about nine months on this, and uh, this is uh, five screens, three locations like you mentioned, and there'll be about 175 filmmakers in attendance with their crew of filmmakers and actors, so this is the place to be if you like movies and you want to check out some independent films. I know right now there's a strike happening. So, you know, this is a great place to see the new stuff happening that's coming out, um, that's even going to come out in the theaters. We're, we're doing some first runs at the Palladium. So. We mentioned some of the films that are going to be shown, some immigration, some foodie yeah. films. Right. Tell me about some of them that you're most excited about. Oh my goodness, uh, we have the Children's Film Festival. It's happening on Friday morning and Saturday morning. Um, you know, I'm super excited to meet the uh, editor for the first Star Wars movie, and he also did uh, Empire Strikes Back, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. His name's Paul Hirsch. He's an Oscar winner, Oscar winning editor. He'll be here, and it's a free panel. It's on Saturday at noontime at the Tobin Center. Um, but man, I'm so excited for this. Like you said, I'm so tired, of, <laughs> but it's so fun. It's like Christmas. You put a lot of work into this and you can tell a lot of excitement. Now tell us a little bit about the networking opportunities for locals. Sure. Um, I'll tell you that we have, we're screening about a hundred in, no, I'm sorry. We're screening about, uh, <laughs> 27 local filmmakers. And they'll be in attendance, of course, the film people, um, the, the crew, like I said, but uh, the networking opportunities is plenty. I mean, uh, we have the uh, filmmakers uh, VIP lounge from five to seven daily at the Radius Center. And, you know, tickets are available at safilm.com for more information. But, you know, we have several free events, you know, and uh, just come out, check out the website, and uh, you can see more about it on the website, like I mentioned. But there, there's a lot of people to meet. If you're interested, if you've got kids, I'm a school teacher. I teach video production. So if you've got kids that are interested in getting into the film industry, this is a way to do it. You do it all. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. We're going to talk to Adam a little bit more and bring you that story coming up on the Noon Show. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. We look forward to it. Time check, 920, 82 degrees. Type 1 diabetes can affect around 1.5 million people under 20 years old. And the summer months can be a good time to watch for any signs or symptoms in kids. And there's an organization that can help families out. And while nobody wants to be a part of this, um, of this club, it's a wonderful supportive group of people who can help you learn um, the crucial tools and skills and connections that you're gonna need to support your child. 
When we come back, why identifying and diagnosing the condition quickly can save and improve your child's life. 924, the summer months are the best time to be on the lookout for type 1 diabetes signs and symptoms in children. That's according to the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, better known as JDRF. John Nicoto tells us why identifying and diagnosing the condition quickly can be life-saving. Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation volunteer Sarah Benedetti says parents should be especially watchful of the signs and symptoms of type 1 diabetes in children of all ages during the summer months. That's often going to be because children are home with their parents. You know, during the school year, you may not be noticing day-to-day, throughout-the-day patterns uh, as much as you will during the summer when you're with kids day in, day out, and you can really notice subtle changes. JDRF says an estimated 8.75 million people globally are living with type 1 diabetes. 1.52 million of these people are under 20 years old. Type 1 diabetes onset can be very quick. So if you are noticing increased thirst, um, increased frequency of urination, those are going to be the first two symptoms that a lot of people will spot. Benny Daddy says another key symptom is if your child has fruity breath or if their breath smells like acetone. Early diagnosis is crucial for managing the condition effectively. Take your child to the pediatrician and ask for a blood glucose test. That's going to be a finger prick uh, and a urine test where they're going to test for glucose in the urine. And at that time, your pediatrician will be able to say, yes, this looks like an abnormal reading, this is what we're looking at, or maybe it's something else that we need to be considering. She says a diagnosis can be overwhelming for a parent and says JDRF, a nonprofit organization, has a robust chapter in San Antonio and is available to assist with more information and local connections. And while nobody wants to be a part of this, um, of this club, it's a wonderful supportive group of people who can help you learn um, the crucial tools and skills and connections that you're going to need to support your child um, as you figure out the best way to continue their happy, healthy life that they had before their diagnosis. Jonathan Cotto, Keyset 12 News. 926, 83 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including how local schools are keeping their players, coaches, and staff safe during brutal football practices in the summer heat. Plus how a new plan regarding student loans could lower monthly payments for some people while saving others money in a different way. 9.30. Welcome back to Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey for June was just released. So Max joins us again with what the report says and what this means for the economy. Hey. Don't hey, sound Mr. so excited. Hi. Mr. Mark, this is an honor. <laughs> Steph. Pandemic's Hi. officially over. Yeah, I'm at the desk with you guys. We're good to go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the Job Openings and Labor Turnover Survey, we're going to call it JOLTS because, you know, right. it's fun. They just released the latest numbers and the number of available jobs falling for the second straight month. That means that, you know, they're filling jobs. So the U.S. economy may not be metaphorically cruising down the highway, but they are maintaining a nice safe speed for now. Some economists do think that soft landing, which means a cyclical slowdown without a recession, could happen. In fact, it might happen in the next few months. It's one of the reasons for a lot of optimism. Have you seen the market over the last month? That's one of the reasons. Data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics last week showed that the economy is cooling, but so is inflation. So we're staying resilient. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't come up here and be like, there's going to be a recession. We're going to hit all-time highs because there's a hodgepodge of predictions, pontifications, and promulgations. But at the end of the day, there is data to support either side. We could say there's going to be a soft landing. And there's also data to support a possible recession. People are spending way more than they have. But, you know, America. So what we do know is the latest numbers. The numbers of available jobs falling for that second straight month, measuring a little more than 9.5 million or 1.6 jobs per person looking for a job. So if you're looking for a job, there are jobs out there. The latest Joel's report showing that vacancies, they did tick down from May and they shrank considerably since, remember guys, a year and a half ago, March 2022, there were 12 million job openings. This number, just a bit better what economists were expecting, 9.6 million openings. And on a monthly basis, the June JOLTS report also showed that the number of new hires, it fell to under 6 million from more than 6 million. And quits dropped too. So 
Less people quitting their job from 3.7 million to more than 4 million, and layoffs ticked down as well, even though I know you guys talked about CBS cutting about 5,000 jobs in that cost cutting Mostly efforts. Corporate jobs. Exactly. Uh, you know, well, you've seen tech companies try to reduce costs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anecdotally, the Business Journal just did a great report on Texas job openings mm -hmm. and what it means, and they talked about. You know what AI could mean too. Obviously, we're still going to need welders and mm -hmm. you know hard labor and things like that. But AI could take those you know middle America jobs in the U.S. labor market. It is slowing, getting back to balance. But businesses still need to outstrip the number of Americans who are looking for work. That lopsidedness that the Federal Reserve uses is feeding a demand and consequently inflation. It could be an issue because at the end of the day, life is much more expensive than it was three years ago. Yeah. And it's that question of, are we getting paid as much as inflation's making things more expensive? The economy is so tricky to read these days. You ask some Fortune 500 CEOs, they still don't know what's going to happen going into the next fiscal year. So very unpredictable right now. Those Fortune 500 CEOs, they're doing all right, though. Yeah, they don't have to worry as much. Exactly. Their pay stayed with inflation. <laughs> the rest of us, we don't know. Did. And that means that's a problem for some people. Yeah. Max, thank you very Thanks, much. Guys. Thanks. Let's look out there with live cam. No snow at all. 83 degrees, but mm -hmm. a small, 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 small chance of rain for some people. That, you know, that'll, that'll make my day. That's enough. It's a small one, but it is there. And uh, we're hoping that maybe a few of us see some showers this afternoon. That's the hope anyway. I want to show you a great picture. I was driving into work this morning. The moon was so beautiful. The full moon, full sturgeon moon, as it's called also a super moon. You can see just how beautiful it was last night and this morning. Peggy sent this in from Sister Dale. We love the shot there. It, it uh, very, very nice. It was bright out there last night, too, with that big full moon. Uh, let's take a look at the weather where you live. Right now, partly cloudy skies here in San Antonio, 82. The heat index is up to 88. Feels like it's in the 90s already in New Braunfels, where the air temperature is 84. Bernie's at 77. Kerrville is at 80. And we've got mostly a south wind between 5 and 15. Here's the forecast today. Noontime, 94. Then we're up to around 102. For a high, there is a 20% chance of a shower or storm between, I'd say, 5 and 7 o'clock. It's a small window, and I think it's mainly San Antonio and points east. But it is there, a little disturbance rolling through. And that means the radar could have a little something on it uh, when you tune in later tonight. We'll certainly keep you posted. Coming up, we're going to look at the August climatology and let you know what August typically brings uh, to South Texas. That's coming up here in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Let's look back out there with Trans Guy looking at the same situation here at I-35 of Von Army. Uh, things are still very much backed up at this minute. Uh, if you can take another route, please try to do so because this has been the situation pretty much all morning long. And that is the northbound lanes. Well, the federal government has launched a new website to help people save on their student loans. Under a new plan devised by the Biden administration, some borrowers could see their monthly payments drop to nothing, while others will save money over the course of the loan's lifetime. CNN's Chris, Chris Wynn breaks it down for us. With federal student loan payments set to resume in October, some borrowers are feeling the pressure. We'll manage, but we're gonna have to tighten it up again. But relief could be on the way. On Monday, the Department of Education launched a beta website for the Biden administration's new SAVE program, an income-driven plan intended to lower monthly payments and reduce the amount paid back over the lifetime of the loan. Under the new program, income and family size will determine the payments for current and future federal student loan borrowers, with some payments dropping to $0 per month. To qualify for $0 payments, the income threshold has been increased from 150% to 225% of federal poverty guidelines, which translates to an annual income of $32,805 for a single borrower or $67,500 for a family of four. Other borrowers could see their payments cut in half and canceled after at least 10 years of repayment when the program is in full effect next year. The initiative comes after the June Supreme Court decision striking down President Biden's loan forgiveness program. I'm not going to stop fighting to deliver borrowers what they need. But the plan still comes at a cost to the federal government. Estimates range from $138 billion to $361 billion over 10 years, depending on how many people sign up. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn.
And the San Antonio Airport is getting bigger. There's a new terminal for more, for hopefully more direct flights in and out of San Antonio, but to where? So in our latest case that explains, the team breaks down the list of key destinations the local leaders are going after and why they believe this $2.5 billion project could benefit the entire city, whether you fly or not. The seventh largest city in the country is starting to act its size. The connection between the airport and the economy has something that been holding San Antonio back. Well, you can watch this latest Case It Explains episode right now on our website at Kesa.com or our YouTube channel. And you can mark your calendars for this weekend. Spurs Sports and Entertainment hosting its second annual Back to School Bash at the AT&T Center on Saturday from 2 to 5 p.m. Parents, students, and teachers are invited to the free event to get some school supplies for the new school year. You must register for the event, though. You can find that link on our website, kesa.com. And besides school supplies, there will also be health checks available and haircuts if you are interested. Last year's Back to School Bash helped 5,000 people in our area. 938, 83 degrees. You're watching TMSA at 9. And it's time to get ready for a new season of high school football. But this summer temperature, gosh, it can be difficult for players and coaches. We come back how local schools are taking care of their teams as they practice outside. It's always a great day to go to the zoo. Let's check out Zoo Cam at 938. Our flamingos here in San Antonio now experts at dealing with the extreme heat. We'll be back. And we're back at just about 942. 83 degrees, okay. Yeah, we can okay. handle this. All right. We'll give you 10 more for today. That's it. Degrees. That's it. That's it. And that then you're you are out of your allotment for August. <laughs> one, not even one day in. Uh, right. It's not looking good. Yeah. Um, August is is always our hottest month. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that. ten more. So okay. top out 103 tops. I appreciate that. Okay. Appreciate. I think we can stay below 103. Okay. I think we can. Uh, let me show you August climatology and where we stand. So yes, it is our hottest month. At least we peak out uh, as our average high during the month of August, and then. At the end of the month, it actually does start to drop because we start to see some cold fronts. What are those? <laughs> it's been so long. Uh, but we do uh, occasionally see a front by the end of August. 97 is the average high when we start the month. The average low is 75. Uh, by the end of the month, the average high is 94. So it does go down by the end of the month with an average low of 73. The record low is 57. you got to go back all the way to 1891 for that one. And the record high is 110. That was back in 20. 11. So we can see a, a wide range of temperatures in the month of August. Uh, we also know that we've got a bit of a fire danger going on here across South Texas. Really comes as no surprise, right? As dry as it's been. Uh, but things are ramping up a little bit today. We're in the moderate category here around San Antonio for the fire risk, according to the Texas A&M Forest Service. You get up towards Blanco and Fredericksburg and out towards Rock Springs, Brackenville and Del Rio. And you're talking uh, very high risk of grass fires and wildfires. So we gotta be awful careful. Uh, these things can happen very quickly. There's not a ton of gusty winds or anything like that. But once we do get into the fall, and if we don't see any rain between now and then, and we start to get some cold fronts that come through without any rain and it gets windy, then we're gonna have a big problem. Uh, so that's something to keep in the back of your mind. 82 right now, we've got uh, partly cloudy skies, dew point is at 74, heat index is at 88. And as we look at the big picture here, well, you can clearly see our ridge pipe pressure. Everything's going up and around it and away from us, kind of. We've got a little disturbance here in Missouri that'll head south. But there was one yesterday in Louisiana. There is no rain with it right now, but it is moving towards South Texas. Probably isn't going to do a whole lot because that ridge is so very strong. But we have added in some rain chances today. Just a little bit of lift. And by the time we get into the late afternoon and evening hours, the computer models do show a few showers popping up. This is 5 o'clock. Uh, then as we get to, say, 7 o'clock, show some activity still. Now, most of this is going to be east of San Antonio. We'll keep on a 20% chance here, but I'd say it's going to be mainly east of I-35 if we're going to see anything. And we'll keep that to about 8, 9 o'clock uh, before rain chances, what little rain chance we have, goes away. 94 noontime, mostly sunny, but we will add in some clouds by 4 o'clock. 10% chance and then a 20% chance, 6, 7 o'clock, maybe 8 o'clock before, again, those uh, rain chances go away. Temperatures will still top out around 102 today. It'll still be hot, uh, but uh, maybe a degree cooler than yesterday if we're lucky. Here's a look at the future cast. And our ridge pipe pressure meanders around Texas, uh, but it actually does grow in strength a little bit. So I think Friday and Saturday have the potential to be 
really hot. We're talking maybe 104 in that case. Uh, so the heat continues. Now, the high does kind of move west by Sunday, and that may, may open the door down the line uh, for some cooler temperatures, uh, maybe some rain chances, let's hope. Uh, nothing there that jumps off the page just yet, but with it moving west, again, that's a, that's a good sign. It's just so strong that it continues to have its grasp on us here in South Texas. So the extended forecast, we'll go 102 tomorrow, 103 Thursday, which would be near some records, uh, 104 Friday and Saturday, and still some hot temperatures Sunday and Monday. But we'll be watching for any showers that pop up on the radar today, and we'll uh, let you know via the KSAT weather app if anything does pop up, guys. The Texas heat is brutal, but that's not stopping hundreds of local players and coaches from hitting the field for football practice and drills. RJ Marcus tells us how these teams are staying safe during the Texas heat. It's the start of football season in Lavernia, and these coaches and players are doing anything to beat the heat, including practicing before the sun comes up. We did that last year. Um, we felt like it worked well, kept our kids out of the heat, um, especially now. This summer has been, been, been brutally hot, so it, it helps us uh, keep them out of the heat a little bit and a little fresher. The University Interscholastic League has implemented several guidelines for schools during hot weather conditions. Water must be on the field and readily available to athletes at all times, and it's recommended that a minimum of 10 minutes be scheduled for a water break every half hour. We've been preaching hydration all summer and off season making our guys you know carry around a gallon of water and just different things like that like you've got to stay hydrated you've got to eat uh, right after workouts and all that stuff. Marion head coach Ryan Miller says the UIL is also pushing for coaches to test the air before practicing using a wet bulb globe temperature index which takes into account several weather factors. Uh, index which is kind of an index that gives us a, a like a three category uh, template to go off of and it's based off humidity and heat and everything in the air so we want to make sure we follow those following those guidelines. Trainers and coaching staffs are also keeping a close eye for signs of heat illness, including significant weight loss, vomiting, and fatigue. So we've met with our athletic training staff and make sure that they're monitoring and the coaches are monitoring also. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those deals that we're going to have to follow and make sure, you know, obviously the, the athlete's health is the number one priority for us. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. It's electric out there right now, even for these practices and drills. An exciting time with the return of football season. And our sports team is gearing up for another very busy season. KSAT 12 Sports Photo Talk Mark Mendez has been getting up early in the morning to cover different local teams for the upcoming 2023 high school football season. Our big game coverage previews begin later today. And apart all that excitement leading up to our second annual KSAT Pigskin Classic later this month, Antonian, Holy Cross, Southside, Somerset, Jefferson, Uvalde, O'Connor and Brandeis all taking part in our two day event. It begins Friday night, August 25th. Then our triple header is Saturday, August 26th. We'll continue to preview each of these matchups leading up to the KSAT Pigskin Classic. And if you missed any of our coverage, you can still catch it online. And now is the time to get your tickets for the KSAT Pigskin Classic. They are on sale right now and you can find a link on our website at KSAT.com. So all of these games are taking place at the Alamo Dome. And if you're if you're not a KSAT insider, make sure to sign up so you can get the best seats in the house along with other perks. So you can look for this story again on our website at KSAT.com. 948, 83 degrees. When we come back, look at a local theater production that will bring back some memories from the 70s. Welcome back, 952. The Harlequin Theater is located on historic Fort Sam Houston. And right now, the crew is getting ready for their newest production. Stephanie Jimenez got to chat with the cast about the show, and you might know some of the songs. <laughs> the Barbie movie. If you want a live show that celebrates 70s nostalgia, come on down to the Harlequin Theater and watch Vinyl Vault. We want you to feel a sense of nostalgia. We want you to feel excited going back to those 70 days, quite frankly, your glory days for some folks, and just really having a great time enjoying and hearing everything and sing along. <laughs> A lot of the songs too are kind of 
your stereotypical pub songs almost that you'll hear on the river or you know that you know everybody sings along to so that was I kept that in mind when I was putting the show together I wanted people just to come in and be able to sing along with us because that's the coolest feeling when you're on the stage and you hear the audience singing back to you it's, it's amazing Yes, we were on an Air Force base and there are some requirements such as making sure that you um, let us know by Tuesday if you're coming the weekend before because you have to get access um, to the Air Force base. But by all means, it's open to everyone. Come dressed up, come show out. We run from August 4th until the 19th, so there's plenty of time. This show is very groovy. For tickets, visit the Far Out website, ksat.com. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Right now on KSAT.com, they're doing kids area at Schlitterbahn New Braunfels with, quote, the world's first water coaster for kids. It's called the Bow Wow Blaster, and it's a mini version of the Master Blaster. The new kids area will be open for kids 12 and younger, and it will include water slides, spray toys, splash pads, and more. So you can read more about the story on our website and see more pictures of the water park edition. Well, that's cool. That works out for the kiddos. All right, we're still a little mystified by why uh, at least one lane is closed. We've got a log jam at northbound 35 and Von Army. Uh, it is construction out there. Hopefully it will wrap up sooner than later, but we were led to believe, I believe uh, that this was going to wrap up earlier this morning. So we're going to try to get to the bottom of that. And if we figure out what's going on, we will let you know coming up in our later newscast. Hopefully it'll be over before then. Yeah. And uh, right now we're sitting in the low 80s. We'll be up around 102 today. But the exciting part about all of this is that we do have a small chance for a shower or storm showing up this afternoon. We'll be near a record and probably approaching some records the next couple days. Keep the case that weather up handy. I think most of us stay dry. But just in case something pops up, uh, it'll, it'll let you know. All right, we're almost the end of the summer movie season, but there are still a lot of great films coming to theaters this month. That's right. CNN's Rick Damagella shows us just a few of those movies coming out. Boys, where have you been? Woo! We're just running errands. That's it. The month begins with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem on August 2nd and the toothsome Meg 2 The Trench on August 4th. This looks like a bite. Search the ship everywhere. August 11th finds the very scary Dracula film The Last Voyage of the Demeter creeping into theaters alongside the fast-paced racing action of Gran Turismo. Whatever you can imagine, I can create. Yeah, that's more like it. And August 18th pits the super-powered Blue Beetle against the potty-mouthed pooches of Strays. Hoping movie theater air conditioning stays on in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. This could be a lot more... Uh, you know what's interesting? I, I didn't know this till just now. I was looking. Uh, Eddie Murphy's got a Christmas movie coming out what? in what? December called Candy Cane Lane. Uh, it's an American Christmas comedy directed by Reginald Hudlin and written by Kelly Younger. So oh, something else cool. to put on our radar for later this year. Like a movie movie or streaming? Yeah, in the theaters, a movie, I think. Movie. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Have a great day. Yeah. <laughs>